Now we have this fuzzy logic application working. That's the one. Okay, let's figure out the difference between the EG chat, EG chat container. Okay, that's working really well. Thank you very much. Now moving on, we have an issue with the size of the first chart displayed on the page. All the other charts are scaling to the size of the screen, but the first one does not. By the way, if you are feeling like making funny comments, go for it, but keep them on topic. Okay, we're getting two too many suggestions chat container yeah we probably want all the chats to be the same uh we don't want pixels we want relative so we want to make sure all the chats are the same size uh, we also want them to scale to the screen also we would like ideally to be able to see everything in one window so all the charts in a single window without uh, scrolling we also want it to look good on mobile devices go <laughs> develop also we don't want fixed stuff 239 lines that keeps <laughs> oh what on earth i had it Okay, we actually would like all the features on the page to appear on the single viewpoint. Welcome to the Fuzzy Logic EEG Analyzer, an innovative web app that blends the power of fuzzy logic with the fascinating world of EEG data analysis. Let's dive into how this dynamic duo works together. Backend magic with Flask. The backend is powered by Flask, a lightweight Python web framework. Here we define fuzzy logic rules using CFuzzy to assess EEG data for artifact risk. The rules consider amplitude and frequency to determine if the data is clean or noisy. We generate synthetic EEG data to simulate real-world scenarios and pre-process it to extract useful features. Key components. Flask app setup. We initialize the Flask app and define routes for generating and analyzing EEG data. Fuzzy logic. Define fuzzy variables, membership functions, and rules to determine artifact risk based on amplitude and frequency. Data processing. Generate synthetic EEG data with periodic artifacts and pre-process it to normalize and extract amplitude and frequency. Front-end fun with JavaScript and Chart.js. The front-end is built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The JavaScript fetches data from the back-end and visualizes it using Chart.js. It handles dynamic updates and ensures the app works smoothly on both desktop and mobile screens. Key components, dynamic data fetching, use JavaScript to fetch synthetic EEG data and analyze it via API calls. Interactive charts, display EEG data and fuzzy logic membership functions using Chart.js for an engaging visual experience. Responsive design, ensure the layout adapts to different screen sizes, making the app user-friendly on any device. One EEG signal visualization, a line chart displaying the generated EEG signal. Two, artifact risk indicator, real-time analysis of the artifact risk based on the EEG signal. Three, membership functions, interactive charts showing the fuzzy logic membership functions for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. Putting it all together, your app provides a comprehensive yet fun approach to understanding and analyzing EEG data using fuzzy logic. By combining Flask's backend power with JavaScript and Chart.js on the front end, users get a smooth, interactive experience that's both educational and engaging. Dive in, explore the fuzzy logic world, and watch as your EEG data transforms into clear, insightful visualizations. This overview encapsulates the essence of your web application, highlighting its functionality and the seamless integration of various technologies in a fun and engaging manner. Physiologic signals are the body's electrical whispers, captured from the brain, EEG, muscles, EMG, and heart, ECG. These signals are like secret codes revealing how our bodies work. But here's the catch. They're often noisy, like trying to hear a friend in a crowded room. Our mission? to decode these signals, filtering out the noise, artifacts, to uncover the real messages. Meet the Fuzzy Logic EEG Analyzer. Welcome to the Fuzzy Logic EEG Analyzer, where science meets fun. 
This app uses fuzzy logic to analyze EEG signals and assess the risk of artifacts. It's like having a brain signal detective on your team. We generate synthetic EEG data, process it, and apply fuzzy logic rules to determine how much of the signal is noise. Breaking down the magic, setting up the Flask application. We start by setting up a Flask application. Flask is a lightweight web framework for Python that helps us create web applications quickly. It's like our app's command center. Defining fuzzy variables and membership functions. Next, we define our fuzzy variables. Amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. Think of these as the characters in our story. Each character has different moods or states, like low, medium, and high. We use membership functions to describe these states. They help us understand how much a given value belongs to a particular state. Setting up fuzzy rules. Fuzzy rules are the plot twists in our story. They determine the relationships between our characters. For example, if both amplitude and frequency are low, the artifact risk is also low. But if both are high, the artifact risk shoots up. These rules help us decide the artifact risk based on the amplitude and frequency values. Creating the control system. Once we have our characters and plot twists, we create a control system. This system uses the rules to analyze the amplitude and frequency values and compute the artifact risk. It's like our detective piecing together clues to solve the case. Implementing the analysis function. The analysis function is where the magic happens. We input the amplitude and frequency values, run them through our control system, and get the artifact risk. This function is the brain of our application, doing all the heavy lifting. Generating synthetic EEG data. We generate synthetic EEG data to simulate real-world scenarios. This data includes normal brain waves and periodic artifacts. It's like creating practice cases for our detective to solve. Pre-processing EEG data. Before analyzing the EEG data, we pre-process it. This involves normalizing the signal and extracting useful features like amplitude and frequency. It's like cleaning up the clues before presenting them to the detective. Visualizing the results. The front end of our application uses JavaScript and Chart.js to visualize the results. Users can see the EEG signal, the artifact risk, and the membership functions in interactive charts. It's like showing the detective's findings on a big screen for everyone to see. Putting it all together. Our Fuzzy Logic EEG Analyzer provides a comprehensive yet fun approach to understanding and analyzing EEG data. By combining Flask's backend power with JavaScript and Chart.js on the front end, users get a smooth, interactive experience that's both educational and engaging. Interactive elements of the Fuzzy Logic EEG Analyzer. One, real-time EEG signal visualization. When you open the app, the first thing you'll see is a dynamic line chart displaying the EEG signal. This is no static image. It's updated in real time, showing you a synthetic EEG signal that mimics what you might see from real brainwave data. As you scroll through the data, the chart updates to show different segments of the EEG signal. It's like having a live feed of brain activity right on your screen. Two, artifact risk analysis. As the EEG data is displayed, the app simultaneously analyzes it for artifacts, those pesky noises that can mess up your data. The artifact risk is calculated in real time and shown below the EEG signal chart. You can see how the risk changes as the data scrolls by. This is super useful for understanding how clean or noisy your EEG data is. Three, membership function charts. These charts show the fuzzy logic membership functions for amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. Each chart dynamically updates to reflect the current data. You can see how different values of amplitude and frequency map to the risk of artifacts. It's like peeking under the hood of the fuzzy logic engine, seeing how it makes decisions based on your data. Four, dynamic data fetching and analysis. The back end of the app is constantly working to generate new synthetic EEG data and analyze it. Whenever you refresh the page or interact with the app, it fetches new data and runs it through the fuzzy logic system. This keeps the experience fresh and engaging every time you use it. Explore membership functions. Check out the membership function charts to see how the fuzzy logic system evaluates the data. You can see how different ranges of amplitude and frequency contribute to the overall artifact risk. You can dive right into this interactive app and see how it works. Whether you're a data geek or just curious about brain signals, this app has something fun for you. Play around with the EEG data, watch the artifact risk change in real time, and explore the fuzzy logic behind it all. It's like having a mini lab right on your browser. So go ahead, open the app, and start exploring. And if you have any questions or fun observations, drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Happy brainwave analyzing. Okay, so this is interesting. And GPT-4, which they now call legacy model, is actually performing better on this task than the GPT-4. Oh, okay, so now we have the scroller visible but uh, the entire data block is being displayed uh, we need to display a shorter block so we can actually scroll through the data back and forth yeah same thing now let's get it back
back to the working state and regenerative GPT-4, the legacy model. Let's seem to get it. Size is already being used for generating the data. I'm happy to try that out. Let's scroll business, set the bottom, EG chart container. Okay, we have the segment size, but no scrolling. We can't integrate properly. Let's actually move to GPT-4 quickly. The legacy. I hope they fix it because makes it not usable. Now, let's actually try going back to what we had working before. The length of that signal, just so we can scroll back and forth. Ideally, it will be like in the matrix where you generate the data only when looking at it. The advantage of synthetic stuff is great, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so we want to set fixed visible segment size and dynamic canvas if handling scroll events implement event listener. Uh, can we use GitHub Copilot for this? Uh, let's try it with the workspace handle. Okay, that's weird. This is actually specific to what we are doing, seem to be. I haven't actually adjusted anything. Here we go. Back to GPT-4. Uh, can you update and regenerate having trouble integrating? Get rid of the production is production bit business. Fetch the EG data from there and stores it in EG data. Okay. Here is a fully updated version of your JavaScript code to properly handle the display of EEG data with dynamic scrolling, displaying a fixed segment size, and handling data analysis responses effectively. This script includes handling for fetch operations, user interface updates, and error handling to ensure robust operation. Yeah, so there's still the same problem. We want to be able to scroll through the EEG data. So if we have 20 seconds worth of data, then we would like to display, say, two seconds at a time and be able to scroll back and forth with all the parameters, artifact risk, current frequency, current amplitude, adjusting on the fly as we scroll back and forth. Okay, we probably weren't prompting correctly. Now it seemed to be on the task. This uh, roughly the same number of lines. Okay, now we're displaying two seconds of data, but uh, we are not able to scroll through more data. So in other words, we want to have, say, 20 seconds worth of data all up, available, and then we are scrolling through it two seconds at a time, so two second time window. But we still need all the 20 seconds worth of data to be available. Wow, it's a bit slow today. We fetch and store and that in second. We handle scroll when dynamically updated the displayed segment. The segment should still be two seconds at a time. Why are we updating the HTML code? Yeah, it's just putting everything in one file. Well, that, that's actually fine. As long as it works, don't mind how we do it. Uh, later, we'll split it into separate files. That's okay. Yes, this is better for troubleshooting stuff. Having everything in one in one place. So this will be a very long uh, HTML. Don't see the scroller. I don't know what you're doing. Why? Why is it so hard? <laughs> it's because it's using Chart.js. Would it be better if we use uh, Plotly or something? How am I scrolling through the data? I don't see a scroller. Where is the scroller? Yeah, the main idea is to handle the scroll events in such a way that as you scroll through the container, the displayed segment of EEG updates dynamically. This will show two second window of the data at any given time and allow scrolling through the entire 20 seconds data set half a second at a time. Is this any clearer? Let's try a 4.0 mini and GitHub Copilot. Let's see which one does better. 
Yeah, Copilot is actually generating code. <laughs> it's generating pseudocode. Uh, why is this so hard? Uh, we need to change the code to implement the following features. Let's try 4.0 mini again. Expected to start generating code. Yeah, it's much faster. So that's good. This is actually doing anything useful. Still need to hit that continue generate button. Uh, edit handle scroll. Okay, this looks promising. No, 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 no. It's not actually mentioning the 20 seconds a worth of data. Okay, let's regenerate it with GPT 4 the legacy model updating the script section should be okay get rid of the check for production or not okay let's try for for all okay this one's generating the whole code which is more promising yeah kept the production business or check if production or not a display g data it doesn't look like it actually changed anything and also didn't finish uh, generating it unfortunately i did it before as well so that's that it's missing a few few more lines yeah we also have this uh, and so i still do not see the scroller i cannot seem to be able to scroll through the data also above is the python code that we have in the running in the back end does that have any effect it's an updated memory for did you actually finish the data did you finish generating the oh this is becoming ridiculous no, actually i'm sure the python got nothing to do with hey with anything let's go back to the original thing i'm really thinking another I can try Bing. No, not Bing, what's called, but silly names. Ah, it's now called Gemini. Yeah, it actually finished for a change. I just cannot do this. Crazy. Okay, we have something from a bot. Has all these uh, templates. Why? can't generate the whole code i suspect could you generate the whole code without any templates it's actually generating the whole code oh come on did i just say the I'm still paying it i'm not sure because i had the whatever the two three months uh, i think they want you to forget you actually okay can we generate uh, all the prompts required to regenerate this application in text only can you generate the detailed text description prompts describing all the steps that are needed to regenerate the code for this web application make sure not to generate any code It'd be better with a single shot the uh, prompts just essentially yes yeah, so the python code we have well we just assume it's working okay yeah we'll make sure it's checking for local host and then we have this info it should regenerate working code so now we have html we're using chat.js that's fine have a style css oops copy pasting is a skill isn't it yeah we don't actually need that stuff but uh, yeah so this will be only a uh, use when testing uh, locally okay we have a fuzzy logic it didn't finish because it's still generating again pasting skills ah this is just rubbish <laughs> Yeah, this wasn't very successful, was it? Let's check the network. That's not what we meant. It's taking an image instead of actually plotting the chart. There is that error, 
but also why does the EEG chart looks weird? Yeah, that obviously won't make much difference. Uh, so the current implementations seem to be quite heavy on the server. Can we just load all the data into JavaScript and do most of the processing in JavaScript instead of uh, back and forth fetching uh, data from the server? Now the EEG chart should just be the raw data scrollable now it looks like some sort of uh, distorted image and we also need to make sure that the membership function is actually displaying correctly okay yeah, load all the eg data into javascript once that sounds good process data in javascript why are we getting random colors i don't like random colors Can we ask for random colors yeah that's not working Hey, can you explain the current Python code? Make sure to not generate any code in your response. Also, can you generate text-based detailed prompts that will allow Nava AI to generate the code? Sure, I'll explain the current Python code step-by-step -step and then provide detailed prompts to regenerate it. Explanation of the current Python code imports. Flask, JSONify request, and render template from Flask to handle web server functions. NumPy as NP for numerical operations. FFT pack from CP for fast Fourier transform operations. Butter, FiltFilt from Scipy.signal for bandpass filtering. Escafuzzy and Control from Escafuzzy for... Oh, come on. Fail to play message. Oh, not fun. Okay, let's assume that's correct for a sec, because we'll be finishing in a second. Maybe try a different uh, uh, reader. So speech. Hey, I'm... Yeah, there's a lot of bugs with the system. Uh... Sure, I'll explain the current Python code step by step, and then provide detailed prompts to regenerate it. Explanation of the current Python code. One, imports. Flask, JSONify, request, and render template from Flask to handle web server functions. NumPy as NP for numerical operations. FFT pack from SciPy for fast Fourier transform operations. Butter, FiltFilt from SciPy.signal for bandpass filtering. SK Fuzzy and Control from SK Fuzzy for fuzzy logic operations. 2. Flask app initialization. An instance of the Flask app is created. 3. Fuzzy logic system setup. Three fuzzy variables are defined, amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk. Membership functions for these variables are created using trapezoidal membership functions. Four, fuzzy rules definition. Three fuzzy rules are created to determine the artifact risk based on amplitude and frequency. Five, fuzzy control system. A control system is created using the defined rules and a simulation object is instantiated. Six, EEG analysis function. The analyze EEG function uses the fuzzy control system to analyze EEG data based on input amplitude and frequency. Seven, bandpass filter functions. Butter bandpass and butter bandpass filter functions create and apply a Butterworth bandpass filter to the data. Eight, synthetic EEG data generation. The generate synthetic EEG function generates synthetic EEG data with periodic EMG artifacts. Nine, EEG data preprocessing. The preprocess EEG data function normalizes EEG data and extracts average amplitude and frequency components. 10. Membership functions extraction. The extract membership functions function extracts and formats membership functions for the fuzzy variables. 11. Flask routes. Index renders the home page. Generate EEG. Generates and returns synthetic EEG data. Analyze EEG route, accepts EEG data, preprocesses it, analyzes it, and returns the artifact risk along with average amplitude and frequency. Get membership functions, returns the membership functions for the fuzzy variables. 12. App execution. The Flask app runs in debug mode when the script is executed. Prompts for regenerating the code. Imports and Flask initialization. 1. Import the necessary libraries. Flask for web server functions, NumPy for numerical operations, SciPy for signal processing, and SKFuzzy for fuzzy logic. 2. Initialize a Flask app instance. Fuzzy logic system setup. 1. Define three fuzzy variables, amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk, with appropriate ranges. 2. 
Create trapezoidal membership functions for each fuzzy variable, low, medium, and high for amplitude and frequency, and low, medium, and high for artifact risk. Fuzzy rules definition. One, define three fuzzy rules. Rule one, if amplitude is low and frequency is low, then artifact risk is low. Rule two, if amplitude is medium or frequency is medium, then artifact risk is medium. Rule three, if amplitude is high and frequency is high, then artifact risk is high. Fuzzy control system. One, create a fuzzy control system using the defined rules. Two, instantiate a simulation object for the control system. EEG analysis function. One, define a function analyze EEG that takes amplitude and frequency as inputs. Two, input these values into the control system and compute the artifact risk. Return the computed artifact risk. Bandpass filter functions. One, define a function butter bandpass to create a Butterworth bandpass filter with specified low cut, high cut, and sampling frequency. Two, define a function butter bandpass filter to apply the bandpass filter to the input data. Synthetic EEG data generation. One, define a function generate synthetic EEG that generates a baseline EEG signal and adds periodic EMG artifacts. Two, ensure the generated EEG data is rounded to two decimal places and returned as a list. EEG data preprocessing. One, define a function preprocess EEG data to normalize the EEG data. Two, extract the amplitude and frequency components using FFT and compute their averages. Three, return the average amplitude and frequency. Membership functions extraction. One, define a function extract membership functions to extract and format the membership functions for a given fuzzy variable. Flask routes. One, create a route index to render the homepage. Two, create a route generate EEG to generate and return synthetic EEG data. Three, create a route analyze EEG route to accept EEG data, pre-process it, analyze it, and return the artifact risk along with average amplitude and frequency. Four, create a route get membership functions to return the membership functions for the fuzzy variables. App execution. One, ensure the Flask app runs in debug mode when the script is executed. These prompts should help another AI regenerate the code in a structured and detailed manner. Where did you get that error from? It's really pissing me off. Okay. Uh, what are you talking about? Let's try regenerating the GPT-4. Interestingly enough, it's giving me time limits for on GPT-4, but not for all. What is no problems? Are there? Oh, that that one is fine. Anyhow, yeah, we'll have to continue this one uh, next time. In the meantime, hopefully the website is still running. Yes, it is. Go check it out. Uh, let me know what you think. Bye.